G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today I am doing a totally impromptu video because, you guessed it, I have exams coming up. As much as I enjoy doing the weekly tips videos and True Footy reacts, I did think it would be a nice idea to kind of break up the monotony and do a slightly different kind of video. Today I was kind of bored and looking at an old episode of the True Footy podcast, specifically True Footy podcast 29 where we talk about our 20 players to watch for the 2019 season. In the podcast, all four of us named five players that we were excited to see play Play this year and we had to explain why. So in this video I'm going to be looking back at the five players that I nominated in that podcast and see if I made a good call or not. So I'm going to roll back the footage from that podcast and you guys can have a little geese at which players I chose and my reasoning. On to your five. Hit us with number one. Who you got? First of all it's a player that I've mentioned several times this preseason but I'm going to really ram it home and that's Tom Rockliffe because I think a lot of people have kind of written him off since he went to Port. Yep. Uh, missed a lot of the preseason last year due to a groin injury. I think as a result, played off a fair bit forward, didn't really get the, the touches that we are uh, so used to him getting, um, so to speak. And now that he's fit, he's proven himself a bit in the JLT2. He had 41 possessions at a DT score of 178. The only limiting factor on him will be the fact that Port rotate their mids and forwards a bit. So it's he and someone like Boak and Eve, they can all play forward. So um, provided he spends a bit of time in the middle, I think he could be have a big season. Mm -hmm. okay. So the first player that I chose was obviously Tom Rockliffe. And as you can see in the video, my logic was that he was going to come back strong after an injury riddled 2018. So far, I'm thinking that's looking like a pretty good call. He's averaging 31 possessions and seven clearances a game. And he's proving to be one of the AFL fantasy bargains of the season. Looking back now, it's kind of easy to forget that Rockliffe had kind of fallen by the wayside. A lot of people had kind of written him off because he had a really underdone year in 2018. Personally, I thought with a good preseason, we were going to see him bounce back. And that's pretty much exactly what's happened. The next one I have is Tim Taranto, who I think you kind of mentioned earlier, Joycey. Yeah. Um, absolute gun, I reckon. I've said before, I think him and Pal Pepper were the best two players from the 2016 draft, in my opinion. Number one and two. And, um, well, I'd say At the he's, time, or you think that now? I thought that at the time. I okay. thought that at the time. And I still think it could come true, and I think Taranto could prove to be pick one. Definitely. Uh, sorry, like, worthy of being pick yeah. one that year. And, um, Last year, he averaged 20 possessions and six tackles a game and had a couple of 30 possession games, which is pretty good for a guy in his second season. And with a bit more time in the midfield with Shield gone, I can really see him um, becoming a you know, 25 possession a game player. So my second pick was Tim Taranto. And I remember feeling at the time that Taranto probably wasn't highly rated enough by the broader AFL community. For just a second year play last year, I thought he looked magnificent and mature beyond his years. Whether or not he's the best player from the 2016 draft, as I said in that video, is up for debate. In fact, it's probably a good video idea on its own. No one steal that. That's my idea. But I am happy with this call in hindsight because I feel like we've seen significant improvement from Taranto in 2019. He's averaging 28 possessions a game this year compared to last year where he averaged 21. So, this year he's also averaging 5 clearances, 5 marks and 6 tackles a game. I think it's fair to say that Taranto has taken his game to the next level in 2019. Third player up is Dom Sheed, another player I've mentioned previously because I had him in my dream team in our fantasy podcast. But last 5 games of last year, 29.4 disposal average and 3 of those were finals and obviously that massive grand final he had. Pre-season so far, he's had 38 and 40 possession games. Regardless of whether Gaff's in the side or not, I think he's, his form is here to stay. And I think he's going to become an important player for the West Coast midfield. So Dom Sheed was my third player to watch, largely on the basis of his end to the 2018 season. Obviously, we know the events of the dramatic grand final, but for me, it was more based on the 10 weeks preceding that in which he played really well. Sheed spent patches of the first half of the 2018 season in the waffle because when Gaff was in the side, it seemed like Sheed was pushed to a forward flank and he couldn't really play there quite as well. So my call in the podcast was basically that I thought Sheed's good form was here to stay, regardless of whether Gaff came back into the side. Sheed started the season ridiculously well in round one, gathering 38 disposals. Although, although to be fair, his production did take a little bit of a hit at first when Gaff came back into the side. Evidently, however, he seems to have found his niche again and he's playing really good football again. Now, he may not be one of the stories of the season, but personally, I'm pretty comfortable with my call in this video looking back. Number four on my list is another draftee, um, and in my opinion, the early contender with Sam Walsh for the Rising Star, and that's Zach Butters. Had a really good preseason, uh, 25 possessions in one game and three goals in the other for Port Adelaide. Okay. And I think he's just he's a really smooth mover, um, really crafty outside player. And I think those guys 
um, are well suited to doing well in their first season because they don't have to rely on their contested game and because he's such a good player, um, he can play well and play a role for a side straight away. So I'm going to say watch out for him. I feel like he'll be um, a well-known name by the end of the year. So, so far, my Zach Butters call as my fourth player to watch isn't terrible, but I was probably a bit too strong on how good he was going to be in his first season. Now, don't get me wrong, he's had a very good season, but he's probably been shaded by his rising star teammates in Xavier Dersma and Connor Rosie. Now, if I was a Port fan, I would still be very excited with having him on the list. He's a very smooth outside mid talent. Smooth is in playing style, not physically. That being said, I was still probably a little bit off the mark with just how good he was going to be in season one. He's definitely not a rising star contender this year, I don't think, but he is going to be an important best 22 player for the power for many years to come. Of that, I'm sure. And number five is someone called Brennan Cox. I think you guys might have heard of him being Fremantle fans. I think he's actually a player that's a little bit underrated by the broader AFL community. Just, And I don't really blame them because he was like, what, pick 43 and... Hasn't played that much. Yeah, he's, he got a Rising Star nomination last year, but I think um, I think he's actually one of the better talents at Fremantle and he can play equally well at up forward or down back. He's, he's injured at the moment, right? Yeah. For a month. Yeah. Is that right? Whether he goes forward or back or if he's a swing man, I think he is a very good player. And um, hopefully he gets on the park this year because I think more people will know his name by the end of the year than they do now. So that's my five. Now, my last call was the Fremantle key position talent, Brennan Cox. Of the five players I picked, this was probably the worst call. Now, obviously, I mean no disrespect to Brennan Cox when I say that, but to have him in my five players to watch in 2019, I was probably not overly accurate with that call. But to have him in my five players to watch this year, I was obviously nowhere near it with that call. He's played just five games this season. Partially that's due to injury, but I also think Hogan and Lobb coming into the side has probably disrupted him a little bit and he doesn't have a clear role. I do love the way he plays the game. He plays with a tenacity and his versatility is a real asset. For me, I think Fremantle have got to watch him. They've got to give him plenty of games for him to develop and keep him happy because I could see him going to another club for more opportunity and that biting them in the ass. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Sorry, Freo. Anyway, I still think he's a good talent, obviously, but to have him in my five players to watch was a bit of a shit call. So that's my list of five players. I kind of wish I'd mix the order around so we didn't finish on such a shit call. <laughs> Nonetheless, thank you for tuning in to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Maybe in the comments, you guys could suggest to me which player has been your favorite player to watch this season. And you can't just pick a player from your own team. Pick someone else. Anyway, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe for weekly AFL content. I do also want to thank the people who got around my personal channel, Jesse Thomas. It's up to 170 subscribers. I'm really trying to build that in the background. So thank you so much if you've hopped on board. Like I said in the last video, I'm probably only going to get to do my weekly tips video next week. I really need to start being diligent and studying for exams. But hey, I uploaded four uploads across two channels this week. So I think I deserve a break. Thanks, guys. I'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.